is about a political revolution to not only elect the president, but to transform this country. Yeah. Yeah. We are live at a watch party for the Democratic debate. Thank you. My name is Martin O'Malley. I was born the year Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech. And I want to thank the people of South Carolina, not only for hosting our debate here tonight, but also for what you taught all of us in the aftermath of the tragic shooting at Mother Emanuel Church. You taught us, in fact, in keeping with Dr. King's teaching, that love would have the final word when you took down the Confederate flag from your state house, let go of the past, and move forward. Eight years ago, you brought forward a new leader in Barack Obama to save our country from the Second Great Depression, and that's what he's done. Our country's doing better. We're creating jobs again. But in order to make good on the promise of equal opportunity and equal justice under the law, we have urgent work to do, and the voices of anger and fear and division that we've heard coming off of the Republican presidential podiums are pretty loud. We need new leadership. We need to come together as a people and build on the good things that President Obama has done. That's how I'm running for president. I need your help. I ask for your vote, and I look forward to moving our country forward once again. Thank you. Now, the first question you want to give lesson to all the candidates. President Obama came to office determined to swing for the fences on health care reform. Voters want to know well, how you would define your presidency. How would you think big? So complete this sentence. In my first 100 days in office, my top three priorities will be fill in the blank. Senator Sanders. Well, that's what our campaign is about. It is thinking big. It is understanding that in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we should have health care for every man, woman, and child as a right, that we should raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour, that we have got to create millions of decent paying jobs by rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. So what my first days are about is bringing America, America together to end the decline of the middle class, to tell the wealthiest people in this country that yes, they are going to start paying their fair share of taxes, and that we are going to have a government that works for all of us, and not just big campaign contributors. Again, we're at a Bernie watch party present to the Congress my plans for creating more good jobs in manufacturing, infrastructure, clean and renewable energy, raising the minimum wage, and guaranteeing, finally, equal pay for women's work. I would also, I would also be presenting my plans to build on the Affordable Care Act and to improve it by decreasing the out-of-pocket costs, by putting a cap on prescription drug costs, by looking for ways that we can put the prescription drug business and the health insurance company business on a more stable platform that doesn't take too much money out of the pockets of hardworking Americans. And third, I would be working in every way that I knew to bring our country together. We do have too much division, too much mean-spiritedness. To do on immigration. All she has to say is, I'm a woman now. Campaign finance reform, but we need to do it together. That's how we'll have the kind of country for the 21st century that we know will guarantee our children and grandchildren the kind of future they deserve. Thank you. First of all, I would lay out an agenda to make wages go up again for all Americans rather than down. Uh, equal pay for equal work. Making it easier rather than harder for people to join labor unions and bargain collectively for better wages. Getting 11 million of our neighbors out of the underground shadow economy by passing comprehensive immigration reform. Raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour however we can, wherever we can. Secondly, I believe the greatest business opportunity to come to the United States of America in 100 years is climate change. And I put forward a plan to move us to a 100% clean electric energy grid by 2050 and create 5 million jobs along the way. That seems worth all that time. I'm sorry, that was second, Lester. And third and finally, we need a new agenda for America's cities. We have not had a new agenda for America's cities since Judy Carter. 
We need a new agenda for American cities that will invest in the talents and the skills of our people, that will invest in CDBG, transportation, infrastructure, transit options, and make our cities the leading edge in this move to a redesigned, built, clean, green energy future that will employ our people. All right, Governor, thank you. You talked about as we continue in the evening. The last couple of weeks of this campaign have featured some of the sharpest exchanges in the race. Let's start with one of them, the issue of guns. Senator Sanders, last week Secretary Clinton called you, quote, a pretty reliable vote for the gun lobby. Right before the debate, you changed your position on immunity from lawsuits for gun manufacturers. Can you tell us why? Well, I think Secretary Clinton knows that what she says is very disingenuous. I have a D minus voting record from the NRA. <laughs> I was in 1988. There were three candidates running for Congress in the state of Vermont. I stood up to the gun lobby and came out and maintained the position that in this country we should not be selling military style assault weapons. I have supported from day one an instant background check to make certain that people who should not have guns do not have guns. And that includes people with criminal backgrounds, people who are mentally unstable. I support what President Obama is doing in terms of trying to close the gun show loopholes, and I think it should be a federal crime if people act as straw men. We have seen in this city a horrendous tragedy of a crazed person praying with people and coming out and shooting nine people. This should not be a political issue. What we should be doing is working together. And by the way, as a senator from a rural state that has virtually no gun control, I believe that I am in an excellent position to bring people together senator, to fight for sensible gun you did, did you answer the question that you did change your position on the unity of the gun manufacturer. So can you, can you what I have said is that the gun manufacturer's liability bill had some good provisions. Among other things, we prohibited ammunition that would have killed cops who had protection on. We had child safety protection for gun guns in that legislation. And what we also say is a small mom and pop gun shop who sells a gun legally to somebody should not be held liable if somebody does something terrible with that gun. So what I said is I would relook at it. We are going to relook at it, and I will support stronger provisions. Secretary Clinton, would you like to respond to Senator Sanders? Yes. Um, <laughs> look, I have made it clear, based on Senator Sanders' own record, that he uh, has voted with the NRA, with the gun lobby, numerous times. He voted against the Brady Bill five times. He voted for what we call the Charleston loophole. He voted for immunity from gun makers and sellers, which the NRA said was the most important piece of gun legislation in 20 years. He voted to let guns go onto Amtrak, guns go into national parks. He voted against doing research to figure out how we can save lives. Let's not forget what this is about. 90 people a day die from gun violence in our country. That's 33,000 people a year. One of the most horrific examples not a block from here, where we had nine people murdered. Now, I am pleased to hear that Senator Sanders has reversed his position on immunity, and I look forward to him joining with those members of Congress who have already introduced legislation. There is no other industry in America that was given the total pass that the gun makers and dealers that's, that's, were, and, that's and that thing. needs to be reversed. All right, Governor O'Malley, you signed top gun control measures as governor of the And she quickly forgets the pharmaceutical industry. In South Carolina who own guns. This conversation might be worrying many of them. They may be hearing, you want to take my guns. What would you say to them? But this is what I would say yesterday. Look, the, I've listened to Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders go back and forth on which of them has the most inconsistent record on gun safety legislation. And, uh, and I would have to agree with both of them. They've both been inconsistent when it comes to this issue. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the one candidate on this stage that actually brought people together to pass comprehensive gun safety legislation. This is very personal to me being from Baltimore. I'll never forget one occasion visiting uh, 
Little boy in Johns Hopkins Hospital, he was getting a birthday haircut, the age of three, when drug dealers turned that barbershop into a shooting gallery, and that boy's head was pierced with a bullet. And I remember visiting him. It did not kill him. I remember visiting him and his mother in Johns Hopkins Hospital, and his diapers with tubes running in and out of his head, same age as my little boy. So after the slaughter of the kids in Connecticut last year, we brought people together. We did pass in our state comprehensive gun safety legislation. It did have a ban on combat assault weapons, universal background checks. And you know what? We did not interrupt a single person's hunting season. I've never met a self-respecting deer hunter that needed an AR-15 to down a deer. And so we're able to actually do this. Thank you. This is a community that has suffered a lot of heartache in the last year. Of course, as you mentioned, the, the church shootings. We won't forget the video of Walter Scott being shot in the back while running from police. We understand that a jury will decide whether that police officer was justified. But it played straight to the fears of many African-American men that their lives are cheap. Is that perception or your view is it reality? Well, sadly, it's reality. And it has been heartbreaking and incredibly outraging to see the constant stories of young men like Walter Scott, as you said, who have been killed uh, by police officers. Uh, There needs to be a concerted effort to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. And that requires a very clear agenda for retraining police officers, looking at ways to end racial profiling, finding more ways to really bring the disparities that stalk our country into high relief. One out of three African American men may well end up going to prison. That's the statistic. I want people here to think what we would be doing if it was one out of three white men. And very often the black men are arrested, convicted, and incarcerated for offenses that do not lead to the same results for white men. So we have a very serious problem that we can no longer ignore. Your time is up. Senator Jack, my next question is actually Jack, actually my next question is for you. The Secretary said. We have a criminal justice system which is broken. Who in America is satisfied? that we have more people in jail than any other country on earth, including China, disproportionately African-American and Latino. Who is satisfied that 51% of African-American young people are either unemployed or underemployed? Who is satisfied that millions of people have police records for possessing marijuana when the CEOs of Wall Street companies who destroyed our economy have no peace. And this is love, Bernie. Justice system, investing in jobs and education, not in jail. Just over a week ago, the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus endorsed Secretary Clinton, not you. He said that choosing her over you was not a hard decision. In fact, our polling shows she's beating you more than two to one among minority voters. How can it be the nominee if you don't have that support? Well, let me talk about polling. The Secretary Secretary Clinton well knows when this campaign began, she was 50 points ahead of me. We were all up three percentage points. Guess what? In Iowa, New Hampshire, the race is very, very close. Maybe we're ahead of her. In terms of polling, guess what? We are running ahead of Secretary Clinton in terms of taking on my good friend, Donald Trump. We beat him by 19 points in New Hampshire, 13 points in the last national poll that I saw. To answer your question, when the African-American community becomes familiar with my congressional record and with our gender and with our views on the economy and criminal justice, just as the general population has become more supportive, so will the African American community, so will the Latino community. We have the momentum. We're on a path to a victory. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
rights movement last year. And here in South Carolina, Black Lives Matter was the number one trending political issue. Governor O'Malley, you've campaigned in your record as governor of Maryland and before that the mayor of Baltimore last